Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the second part of the engine house build. Uh, if you tuned in for the first one, uh, I hope you are ready for the second one. If not, I'm going to put a uh, thing right up here uh, to get you a link to the first one so you can see what we worked on to get to this point. We started one of those pipe stuff small engine house uh, kits. We've uh, done some weathering, a little bit of weathering, not much, uh, a little bit of painting and uh, some streaking here. To get to where we're at here today, where we're going to start. A little bit breezier out today than it was yesterday. It looks like it could actually drizzle a little bit. But my dog's out here. Hopefully she doesn't provide too much color commentary either. But anyway, we're going to take this and we're going to keep going. But uh, first, I want to get some lighting in here before I put the roof on to do the weathering. And I'm going to be able to light this building using an ordinary drinking straw. So you have to stay tuned and find out how I do that. He runs diesel engines, so they don't go choo-choo. UP trains are yellow, and DMEs are blue. Dustin sends go railroad, where the railroad comes to you. So, as I said, I'm going to light this thing with a straw, with a drinking straw, see? So how am I going to do that, you ask? Well, because before I got online here to do this video, I got myself a little white strip, wired it up. Now I use some Cat5, um, just regular internet cable that I've got to hook it up. And it'll hook up to 12 volts. I already hooked it up to the power supply to test to make sure it works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stick that to this little shed right here. Now to do that, I'm going to pull off this backing. If you've never used this stuff before, by the way, I highly suggest getting it. You get it on Amazon. It's like 10 or 20 bucks for a 12-foot roll. More than you will need. Now I'm going to put it down here like so. Only because I know it's going to be not quite centered. But the reason I don't want it centered is because I want to have, being the garage doors are off center just a little bit. I also want to get it on these ridges. Make sure you press it down good and tight. And you do that. So, where does the drinking straw factor in? Well, let me show you. First of all, I plan to put it right here. So what we need to do is find a spot where it works. So I put that right there. I'm going to mark it, but then stay right there. So I'm going to bring it back just a little bit more. Put it right there. Side here and move this off to the side right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little shorter than the actual wall. Quite a bit shorter than the actual wall. Let's do a quick cut like that. And we'll put the rest of the straw to the side. Okay? Clean up the edges just a little bit. Make sure it's good and round because you want to make sure. Now these drink straws, if you haven't noticed about them, they've got a little separator. And I'm sure you probably can't see it, but we'll see what we can do here. It's, uh, they've got little division in them, these little drink straws. That's going to come in handy. So it's going to protect the cable to be able to isolate the wires. So if you can just hang on one second, we'll uh, get that installed. Okay, so now we are back. Got my hot melt glue gun heated up. I'm just gonna put a bead here right along. If I can get it to heat up, there we go. Right along the door sill there. That's all we need. I'm gonna take the straw. Put it right in there on the glue and let it set up nicely before it gets too dry. It doesn't take long for hot melt glue to dry when you have a south wind blowing right at it, let me tell you. And there, I believe we've got it. There, it is enough to be stuck. So, there we go, that's all I have to do on that. I'll plug the glue gun again. We are not going to need it yet anymore here today. At least not that I'm aware of. Of course, anything can probably happen. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to thread these wires. Now, obviously, when you get it braided like this, it takes a little work to get it separated. Not a lot of work, but it takes some work. So, we're going to separate this quick. Hopefully we're going to separate this quick. 
not separating as fast as I would like it to, or at all for that matter. We'll uh, get this separated and be right back. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up the way we want. We got the straw back here. So what we're going to do now is thread the wires through, and I'll try to do this without blocking the camera if I can. Make sure this is good and straight. Make sure these, this is a braided wire on Cat5 if you're not aware of that. But I want to make sure it goes down the side of the tube, and it, there it goes. Should go all the way down. And see with this two-sided drink straw, like I said, what's really nice about them is the fact that they have... Well, they've got these two sides. They have a little small division in the middle. Not enough to really do anything, but just enough plastic in there that if there is any cracks in this wiring shield, it should, by rights, at least give it a little more isolation. So there we go. We're going to pull this through. And looks like we have a little difficulty there. There we go. Hopefully, well, looks like you got to untwist it just a little bit, but not badly. I'm trying to keep the hand out of the way. That was my plague last time I did this, but sometimes there's not much you can do about it. So we get towards the end here. There we go. Now we have the roof on. Move these wires out here so they don't. So now the next thing we got to do is glue this roof on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn off the camera for this part because, well, one, you know how to glue, and two, it's going to be hard to glue and do this correctly while I'm trying to make sure that my camera is not in the way. So my hands aren't in the way of the camera. But right now, as you can see, I've got the wires in. As you can see, i got the wires in. And the wires are through that straw, which you can't see along the side of the building. And then I'll be able to drill the hole down in there. And everything will look good. So when we come back, we'll have the roof uh, attached. So there you have it. We got the rubber bands on. We're going to let her set up and dry. I even put some Tamiya putty in some spots in the roof where there was some gapping going on. And uh, that way no light will shine through at least part of the building. And uh, we'll come back when that roof is set on. We'll probably be back in about 15-20 uh, minutes. Don't worry. It'll feel like instantaneous to you. All right, we are back. I told you it wouldn't take long at all, didn't it? We got 45 minutes went by in a flash. You'll see I still got some rubber bands here because when I pulled the rubber banding off, uh, part of it lifted up just a little bit. So I decided I'm going to re-glue that and get that done. And I just tucked the electrical wires back underneath the building right now. And I'm going to start working a little bit on my weathering. Now, don't have an actual rust. Oh, I do have some actual latex rust paint, or enamel rust paint, but... What I'm going to use here for a little bit is some burnt sienna, uh, some of this deco art burnt sienna. And I'm going to be using as much of the dry brushing technique as I am able to. I'm going to slide this down just a little bit. So I have, my father would say, get yourself in a working position. So shook that up. This burnt sienna has a little bit of a brown, but also has just a reddish tint to it. I got something stuck to this plate here. Love paper plates for doing this stuff. That should be great plenty to start with. There. Make sure I got it down. So now i got to find my brush. Here we go, and we're going to use a dry brush technique, which means I'm going to dip the brush in some paint, and then I'm going to brush off as much as I can. So only a little bit remains. And then what we're going to do is take some down and do some very light streaking. Now again, you're not going to see a lot, but it's just enough to add a little streaking of rust. Pick up a little more. Again, you want to make sure that you have that you have the, it dry as much as you can. It's just a very light coat going on right now. And like I said, that's what you want. Actually, this brush bristle is not that stiff. What I'm going to do is, I know I've got a few more in here. I also want to cover a little bit larger area with this. So I'm going to use a different brush. It's a little more stiff here. Pick up some paint. Again, 
you want to decan off and we go ahead and we just and that was a little heavier than I should have had it but what I can do is spread that out but now if you ever look at these old buildings these old galvanized buildings there's some spots where it can get really rusty what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of it try to grab as much as I can down and uh, so you see what I'm doing there I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little for you and we'll try to reduce some of that streaking so stay tuned So there you have it. I put some rust on. We got a little heavier than I was hoping to, but I also put some white on. You saw, you saw that too. And some of these galvanized buildings, they oxidize over time, and you get a little bit of a lighter colored rust. So um, it does happen. I'm going to add a little bit of weathering powder to it yet to maybe bring down some of the bright spots. I got some rust, medium rust, and some terracotta. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it in the dark earth or not. I might. But I'm going to do a little of that, and then I think we'll be ready to seal it up and uh, call it uh, good.
So there you have it. Uh, I took the weathering powders. I got it on there the way I wanted. It's a little rustier. You might think it's a little dusty, but this building's been around for a while. It's been beat up. That's the story I'm trying to tell. So that's what I got the way I want it. And uh, we're going to put some clear coat on it. And then uh, before we end tonight, we'll uh, go ahead and bring it down to the layout and I'll at least hook it into the wiring so you can see it light up. So there you go. We'll be back for the final reveal in just a moment. All right, so we've got it wired in. I got it dimly lighted. Dim lighted? Is that a word? I'm dim lighted. Uh, anyway, I got one spotlight in here uh, that goes over the top because that's just the main light in this room. But I turned all the other lights off around the layout um, because this is what it would be like for a nighttime scene. But anyway, here is the moment of truth. Let's see if it lights up. Well, there you go. Now I can see where I've got some, still some slivers to put in, and I'll get those fixed. But if nothing else, I'll at least putty them, but should be able to get them in. That's not a problem. In fact, uh, there's one little hole right there, though. That's a problem. But we'll get that puttied up. That's neither here nor there. We can fix that. But there you go. It works. It lights up. And if you stayed along for the whole thing, I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. You know, the second part got a little longer than the first, but... It was uh, a little more detail of what had to be done. So thanks for coming along on the Engine House build. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, look forward to uh, hearing comments and uh, seeing you guys further on down the road.